So, okay, uh, this is a pure advection equation. Okay, we can also solve the advection diffusion equation. So let's go back to our good second order scheme. All right. And uh, uh, du dx, we can also have d square u dx square, right? That's something very similar. Except for I'm going to be dividing by dx square and uh, any, any minus is going to be replaced by plus. And I'm just going to be minus 2 times u. Right? Any questions on how I changed the first order derivative to second order? So previously I have ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1, right? Now I have ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1. And then I have to minus 2 times ui. So this is 2 times my, minus ui. And uh, uh, this is my contribution from ui plus 1 and ui minus 1. Alright? So let's also give it a small kappa uh, plus times d square u dx square kappa is equal to 0 0.01 okay so then we are solving an equation with diffusion and uh, uh, advection so if we if we solve it uh, OD45 what's the name of this DDT it's no longer purely hyperbolic it's a mixed uh, hyperbolic and parabolic PDE it's the DUDT. DUDT thank you okay oh did I have a huge n with size of my u0 oh yeah okay uh, let's let's don't do that yet let's set n equal to 100 u0 is gonna be it's actually wrong some of these from here I just paste okay so I have a u I'm gonna plot my x and u end so here is the solution instead of a cosine x I get a cosine x that is also decaying space right and how do I analyze how much it has decayed Now let's do a little bit of analysis, right? In order to actually assess how accurate your solution is, you actually have to understand the behavior of the PDE a little bit more precisely. So if I have a purely diffusive equation, go um, to this, what I what I get uh, if my u is uh, some constant a which is a function of t times cosine of x what is my second order derivative of x uh, pardon actually I have a times 2 pi sorry right what's what's your answer minus. yeah it's actually minus cosine uh, multiplied by the same a and 2 pi square right so it's minus 2 pi square times a t times the same cosine x times 2 pi so that means if you plug that into the PDE what I get is that the u is going to be decayed exactly at the same shape right the shape of u wouldn't change it's still cosine but a of t, uh, basically I can say dA dt is going to be minus 2 pi square times kappa times A of t, right? So A of t is going to be behaving like a exponential, right? It's going to be exponential to the minus 2 pi square times kappa times t if the initial amplitude of A is equal to 1. Okay, so that gives us a good handle to figure out the analytical solution. And here, instead of uh, comparing this to u0, 
we are going to multiply that by exponential of minus 2 pi square times kappa which is 0 0.01 times t so that's it all right any questions so we can run this again i think it runs Now it's doing more work. Remember the stability region of a scheme with second order derivative is uh, uh, the, the eigenvalues, not stability region. The eigenvalues are going to be proportional to 1 over delta x square, right? So using OD45, uh, it's giving a harder time to OD45. I'm not sure if this is going to finish in a reasonable time, so I, I'm just going to okay. cut it. So uh, let's do a log log plot again, and uh, here again we see, right? We see this classical second order convergence. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, in this case, the ODE actually has a better time solving the system because. Uh, um, because the solution with the second order derivative is actually smoother. So you, the error term that develops, remember last time the error term developed was pretty oscillatory. So, so with the second order derivative, the solution is smoother and uh, uh, get a, we didn't even see the flattening due to the time integration. All right. So, so this, is a, this is how we analyze the accuracy of finite difference schemes. And just to be careful, don't we here we use the mean of absolute values, right? Some people use the sum of the errors, which are going to give us the wrong convergence. For example, if we run this, I mean, you, you may think of using the sum and using the mean is the doesn't make any difference, right? I mean, some people make the sum of the absolute values squared. Uh, do, doing these kind of things uh, is is sometimes fine but like when you have a varying number of grid points it's actually not going to be fine because if you do this you're going to get a rate of convergence somewhere oh you actually didn't see it let, let me let me plot a let me plot a real second order convergence the 10 and the 10 to the minus 3 right so you actually don't seem to get a second order convergence if you use the sum of the errors why is that the case you have more points. yeah because you have more points when you have a bigger n so this is unfair to the larger grids right you are summing up uh, the, the errors may have decreased by a lot but it has more grid points so you're summing over more you are sampling more in the error. All right.